NMCA's unique heads-up racing program is made up of seven eliminators based on or derived from the classic muscle cars of the 60s and 70s and the new generation EFI cars of the 80s. All the cars must have been designed and made in America and with the exception of nostalgia super stock must have full exhaust systems. Starting with pure stock, each class gets progressively more modified. Before we get into the racing, let's make a stop at the car show. Sponsored by Muscle Car Classics, all these beautiful cars are American made from 1950 to the present and are primarily divided into two categories, restored and modified. These in turn are divided into individual classes based on make and in some cases model and year. Three plaques are awarded in each class with participants choice trophies handed out to the best of show, restored and modified. Prestigious Editor's Choice Awards are also bestowed upon these cars that really, really impress the staff of Muscle Car Classics. It's a 74 Plymouth GTX Roadrunner, which is a built one of 386, which the GTX option, all that is, is it has the 440 motor with the 355 gears and the, and the automatic transmission. We're pretty much do-it-yourselfers. We try to do all we can ourselves. I'm from Garden Grove, California, out near Disneyland. And I come uh, 1,800 miles to get here for this show. And the car you're looking at behind me here is a 1970 Buick GSX four-speed car. 678 GSXs were built, only 79 four-speeds. So this is a very, very, very rare car. It's uh, 68442 W30. Uh, small shows I do okay, but people don't recognize the Oldsmobile that much. Uh -huh. This is a 72 Nova. It's a 350 engine, up at about 365 horse in that area. Well, we just enjoy muscle cars. It's to us, it's a challenge. We've we've been showing cars for quite a few years. We just really enjoy the the people and the nice automobiles. It's kind of a unique uh, model of this of the of the Cobra. It's built on a 94 inch wheelbase as opposed to a 90 inch wheelbase. We like the way the car looks. We like the kit. When you're cooking right along at 55 miles an hour, it's a, it's a whole lot of fun to drive. So. I'm from Union City, Tennessee, and uh, it's 100, about 125 miles. 69 Pro Streeter, me and my brother built it. We did all the work ourselves. It's a 350 Chevrolet. Basically stock with small cam and a blower on it. Perhaps the most hotly anticipated portion of the program is Hot Rod Magazine's fastest streetcar shootout. The rules are fast and loose to promote automotive creativity. Basically anything goes, turbos, nitrous, blowers, cubes galore, as long as the car remains production based, runs a full exhaust, and isn't an all-out race car or running on alcohol. In other words, the essence of street machine. Hot shots from all over the country have shown up to prove themselves, and this race doesn't even have a purse, although Flowmaster Mufflers has put up a small cash prize. No, these guys are in it almost solely for the glory, which in this case takes the form of special jackets sponsored by Cars, Inc. and Flowmaster for the top ten finishers with an extra special jacket for number one. We'll be checking back with these guys a little bit later. The way this weekend event is structured, the class eliminations, that is, the letter classes that make up pure stock, top stock, and modified production, and the engine classes that make up EFI are held on Saturday. The overall eliminator is held Sunday. That way, every contestant has a chance to race twice. Here is an overview of some of those Saturday winners. In A pure stock, Don Kazi of Memphis, Tennessee was uncontested in his gorgeous 63 Max Wedge Plymouth Sport Fury. E.T. was 12.21. B. Pure Stock saw Larry Fleming of Franklin, Kentucky red light in his 69 Hemi Roadrunner, giving the win to Donald Ferrer, Jr. of Lamont, Illinois, in his 7396 Chevelle. In C. Pure Stock, Stan Smith's 69 Hemi Roadrunner from Arlington, Texas got a lucky draw when Jeff Peterson's 69 446 pack Super B red lighted. In D. Pure Stock, there was fine big block competition from Steve Vanderwall's 68 and a half 428 Cobra Jet Mustang and David Fay's 70 455 Stage 1 Buick GS. Steve got the win with a 13.16 ET. 
GM 455 power dominated in e pure stock when Gary Lund's 71 W30 Olds 442 came out on top against Mark Walters' 74 Super Duty Trans Am, the last of the classic muscle cars, 13.26 to 13.33. In H. Pierce stock, Rod Heltzel of Coppell, Texas successfully campaigned his 34070 Dodge Dart against Rick Slowinski's 70s Buick GS wagon. Although what Rick's motor is would be anybody's guess. Bill Meisner's 1956 Chrysler 300B, what the NMCA terms a proto muscle car, was the only contestant in I. Pierce stock getting a 17.52. Don't scoff, these cars were originally designed for the top end power of NASCAR racing. In TB Pure Stock, Memphis native Barlow Mann was able to outrun Ken Woodward's 87 Buick Regal T-Type with his own 87 Buick Grand National. TC Pure Stock saw a surprising performance from Joe Reese's 91 Dodge Spirit RT as he got a 14.41 out of his turbocharged 135 against Daniel Lowell's 91 Olds Calais 442. One of the dominant forces in A top stock this season, Barry Poole power shifted his 68.5 Cobra Jet Mustang to an 11 second win against Anthony Galea's 68 AMC AMX 390. The B top stock final was an extremely close race as Ken Kessling's 427 Nova fought Danny Kellum's 427 Camaro all the way to the end. 11.93 to 11.92. Ken won by virtue of his near perfect 509 reaction time. Shifting from A to C top stock this year, young Kevin Chapman's 69 446 pack Super B easily beat Bob Hinson's 455 powered 67 Pontiac Tempest 11.84 to 12.72. D top stock. The rear end on John McWhorter's 66 W30 Olds 442 locked up on him halfway down the track giving the win to Jack Nelson's 73 340 Dodge Challenger. Solo in E top stock was Galen Rogers' show ready 400 cubic inch 67 Buick Grand Sport with an impressive 13.01 effort. Also solo was G top stocker James Pappas of Carrollton, Tennessee in his 15 second 403 powered 79 Trans Am. A modified production. In a pony car shootout, Kirk Manuel's 44070 Challenger beat Ed Bendel's 467 powered 67 Camaro 10.43 to 11.38. Former super stock racer Dick Lowry again dominated B modified production in his 461 Chevelle by outrunning Gary Turner's 463 powered 72 Olds 442 10.67 to 11.92. C modified production saw Tim Davis's 71340 Demon come out on top when Brian Hampton's 71350 Nova red lighted. Old and new Mustangs were tangling for the D modified production title when Michael Gardner's 85 beat Talmage Abbott's 68. Naturally, it was a pair of 87 Grand Nationals which finished off the stock appearing six cylinder class. Pat Kelly's going 12.14 to Luigi Lavino's 12.29. In stock appearing eight cylinder, Rich Susky's 350 powered 85 Corvette easily fended off Paul Smith's 88 Mustang going 12.55 to Paul's 14.81. In the EFI modified six cylinder class, it was once again a pair of Grand Nationals, this time Travis Beckendorf's 86 versus Brian Haas 87. Travis won 11.42 to 11.70. The Saturday Night Cruise held at Chuck Hutton Chevrolet was truly awesome in every sense of the word. With over 600 cars in attendance, great music being pumped out by RCA recording artist Andy Childs and his band, the Memphis Sound. True Southern style barbecue to feed those in attendance. The cruise and show at Chuck Hutton's turned out to be one big party. I mean one big party. I mean, check out some of the machinery. No, I mean the machinery. There were tons of them coming in from everywhere. This stuff was really prime, the kind of stuff that is lean, mean, and street-driven clean. Without question, the Saturday Night Cruise at Chuck Hutton's was equal, if not better, than anything else we had attended all year.
Flash of the Cubes is a heads-up class for the super big block cars that signaled the peak of the classic muscle car era between 1960 and 1972. For this special exhibition class, all of the rules from top stock apply, although cars from pure stock may also compete, but soft compound tires or slicks are highly recommended. However, unlike top stock and pure stock, there are no power to weight considerations, just pure pedal to the metal excitement. For 1992, the Clash of the Cubes is being sponsored by Muscle Car Review Magazine, which is put out by Dobbs Publications of Lakeland, Florida. Now, throughout the year, Muscle Car Review has been providing blow-by-blow -blow coverage of the Clash and will be rewarding the points leader and runner-up with cash prizes. 100 points have been rewarded for each round one in each of the event series. So far, the leaders are Barry Poole of Chatham, Ontario with 400 points and Derek Smith of Hicksville, Ohio with 300 points. The World Finals will be the determining factor in the epic clash of the cubes. First up in round one is Terry Polk of Houston, Texas driving a 70 Buick GSX. He's alongside Derek Smith in his 69 454 Corvette Roadster. And it looks like the Chevy 454 is going to outrun the Buick 455. It does, 11.51 to 12.84. Barry Poole is running his 68 and a half 428 Cobra Jet Mustang in an impromptu buy run, as his opponent had neglected to sign up for the special race. Barry eases it out of the hole, but the way he's slamming those gears, it looks like he's going to finish flat out, which he does, 11.24 at 120 miles per hour. Next up is Marco Macera of New Orleans in a 71 454 Corvette and Ken Keisling of Dumas, Texas piloting his 70 427 Nova. The vet may have the cubes, but the Nova's got a four speed. Well, it doesn't matter because Marco red lighted. Ken breaks the beams 12.01 at 113.10. Doing a real buy run is Mike Semchi of Newton Falls, Ohio. He's driving a 67 GTO powered by a 400 cubic inch Pontiac motor, the only small block in the Clash of the Cubes competition. He sleeps at the lights, but like Poole, he's hitting the four speed pretty hard in an all out effort, 12.23 at 111 miles per hour. Okay, Mike is back for round two, but this time he's facing old pro Barry Poole in the Cobra Jet Mustang. Good start, but Semchi's acting like he's broken something. Pool breaks the beams going 11.20 while Michael coasts through at 15. Next up are Ken Keisling and Derek Smith with a four speed and an automatic respectively. Ken's Nova launches too soon and gets a red light. Derek pushes the vet ahead and crosses the finish line doing 11.26 at 119 miles per hour. The overall points leader will get $1,000 from Muscle Car Review, the runner-up $500. It just so happens that pulling up to the line are Barry Poole and his Stang and Derek Smith and his vet. So whoever wins this race will be the big kahuna. The cars are well matched. They launch and Derek forfeits with a red light. But he continues to pace Barry down the track and finishes one one hundredth of a second ahead of him. I just bet Derek saying, wait till next year, Barry. On Sunday of the Muscle Challenge, we witnessed the climax of the World Finals, the overall eliminator. This is when all the cars return from Saturday's class races, both winners and losers, to compete in the eliminators on an index basis. Each letter class is given a handicap start, the faster classes getting bigger ones to help even out the efforts of each racer. At the finish line, however, it's still going to be all-out racing as the first car to break the beams is the winner. In the very first round of Pure Stock, we see an example of a very old versus very new John Roberts' brand new 5-liter Mustang up against Ted Robb's 61 Pontiac Ventura. The Poncho is powered by a classic 389, which carries the race. Some new generation muscle here. Kenny Kurdner's 87 Buick Grand National versus Victor Lee's 87 Pontiac GTA. The Buick is powered by a turbocharged 231, the Pontiac by a naturally aspirated 350. The GTA takes the win. A pair of GTOs up next, Bob Looney's red 67 convertible with a 400 motor and Scott Williams turquoise 65 with a 389. Scott red lights with a .453 reaction time giving Bob the automatic win. 
All the way from Garden Grove, California, we have basketball Sam Davis and his beautiful 70 Buick GSX. This 455 big block also won first place in its show class and is racing Rod Helsel in his 340-powered 70 Dodge Dart. The small block takes the win. Next up is Doris Anderson in the 71 Dodge Demon versus Leland Holland's 70 AMC AMX. This is a small block race as the AMX has got a 360 while the Demon's pulling with a 340. Leland's got the better reaction time, but Doris takes the win. Now here's what's called a Phantom Muscle Car, a 70 Buick GS Wagon. No, they never made one, but they should have. This fine example of craftsmanship is owned by Rick Slowinski. He's up against Mark Norris's 73 Pontiac Firebird with a 455. We don't know what Rick's got under the hood, but it's probably a 455 too. Mark's Firebird takes the win. Here we have Joe Reese in his 91 Dodge Spirit RT versus Randy White in his 74 Z28 Camaro. Now, although Randy's got the advantage of some 200 plus cubes, Joe may surprise you. This turbocharged 135 is capable of 14s. Nearly a full second faster, Joe's got the win. Here's classic Ford versus Chevy. Don Ferrer Jr.'s 396, 375 horse Chevy Chevelle against Steve Vanderwall's 68 and a half 428 Cobra Jet Mustang. It looks like a real close race, and Steve breaks the beams first, 13.17 at 102 miles per hour to Don's 13.53 at 102 miles per hour also. Two fine examples of Buick's racing fast with class. Chris Connolly's 70 GSX and Barlow Mann's 87 and a half Grand National. The Turbo 231 versus heavy breathing 455. The big block dominates. Next up is a pair of Texas cars, Gary Lunt's gorgeous 455 powered 70 Olds 442 and Randy Longhenry's 67 Buick GS. Gary's Olds is a rare W30 car, which means it's equipped with Ram Air. And the Olds takes the win. Coming up to the line is an incredibly rare numbers matching 426 Max Wedge 63 Plymouth Sport Fury owned by Don Cassie. He's up against Steve Bellino, 70 Cutlass, powered by a 350. Steve cuts a nearly perfect reaction time of .502, but it's not enough to overcome the max wedge. Kasi takes the win. Starting off top stock is Norm Sorensen in his 327 powered 67 Chevy Nova versus Dennis Miles in his 302 84 Mercury Capri. You may notice the Capri's resemblance to a Mustang. That's because, for a brief spell, Mercury built their own 5-liter pony car. A bad reaction time for Dennis, but he catches up, but doesn't quite make it, being one one-hundredth of a second slower. Next up is Don Lemoyne's 390-68 AMX versus Kevin Chapman's 446-pack. Kevin was the runner-up in last year's Clash of the Cubes, but he red lights out this time, giving the win to Don. In the 34073 Dodge Challenger is Jack Nelson of Utica, Michigan. In the other lane, Ken Springer in a 304 powered 79 AMC Sprint. Saturday, Jack won the D top stock class. However, this time he crosses the finish just behind Kent. Though the black car looks like a Torino, the 70 and a half Ford is actually the last year for the Falcon. Supra Cobra Jet 429 powered, it's owned by Landon Jordan. And though the other car looks like a GTO, it's actually a 455 67 Pontiac Tempest owned by Bob Hinson. Landon takes the win. Now here's a Torino, a 70 model, also 429 powered, owned by Paul Adams. He's up against Anthony Giglia's 69 AMX with 390 power. And the big Ford is the winner. A pair of pony cars now. Chet Roberts, 67 350 Camaro against Barry Poole's 68 and a half Cobra Jet 428 Mustang. Chet is one of the many racers here out of Huntington, Tennessee, while Barry hails from Chatham, Ontario, Canada. The big block dominates. Next up is Tommy Dabbs of Hernando, Mississippi in his bow tie 454 70 Chevelle versus Mike Semchi of Newton Falls, Ohio in a poncho 400 powered 67 Goat. 
Man, this is a close race. Semchi wins with a 12.21 to Dobbs, 12.22. A 69 AMC SC Rambler comes up to the line, one of only 1,500 made. Driven by Eddie Peacock, this C-Class car is going up against Ken Keisling's B-Class 427 70 Nova. The AMC 390 Power gets the better launch, but it looks like the Nova's got the race. Next, we've got a pair of convertibles. Derek Smith's 69 454 Corvette Roadster and Stan Davis's gorgeous 455 70 Buick GS. Stan came in third in his class in the car show. The A-Class Vet beats the F-Class Buick. Next up is Danny Kellums in a big, bad 1969 427 Camaro against Chuck Churchill of Olive Branch, Mississippi with a 350 71 Vet. Chuck gets the good reaction time, but Kellums cubes are coming on strong. A couple more generals to the line. New Orleans native Marco Macero has a 71 Corvette with a 454, while Galen Rogers drives his 400 cubic inch 67 Buick GS show car. The Buick takes the win based on reaction time. It's Ford against Chevy in the first race of modified production. Michael Gardner's 85 Stang is pitted against Dave Henninger's 71 Z28, which is stroked to 391 cubes. Mike won Saturday's demodified production class, but it looks like a red light this time. T.D. Holland, Leland's brother, is up next in his own AMX, a 68 model with a 390. Next to him is Gary Turner with his show class winning 72 Olds 442. Gary red lights and automatically gives the win to T.D. Two heavy hitters up next, Jim Turner's Stage 2 70 GS Buick versus Dick Lowry's Big Block 70 Chevelle. Now Jim has a rare set of heavy breathing Buick heads on his car, while Dick has a custom made Ram Air setup. The matchup is close, and the Chevelle wins. A pair of Chevys are next. Ed Bendel's 67 467 Camaro is pitted against Tony Vaughn's 395 72 Nova, an A class versus a B class car. Look out, Tony Redlight's giving the win to the Camaro. Now here's something of a mystery. Danny Voss didn't write down the engine size for his 80 Malibu. On the other hand, Tim Hafner's 70 Buick GS is 462 cubic inches. Whoa, big time red light from the Malibu. A couple of dodges. Tim Davis's 71 340 Demon against Kirk Manuel's 70 440 Challenger. Now Tim won yesterday's CMP class, but both get good reaction times. The cubes come on strong as Kirk takes the win. The AMP winner from the Milan event, Chuck Weck, has put yes as the horsepower rating for his 462 80 Z28. He's next to Brian Hampton in a 350-powered 71 Nova. They launch, and it appears that Chuck has broken something as he shuts down and coasts. Bringing out the new generation muscle cars here are James Neal's 87 Grand National and Richard Susky's 350-85 Corvette. Neal sleeps at the light, and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to catch up. Next, a pair of 5-liter Mustangs, the gray one being Lee Taylor's 88, the maroon Tracy Gopps 91. It's 5-speed versus automatic. And Goff's automatic wins. Here's a classic Ford versus Buick confrontation. Pat Kelly's 87 GN is pitted against Han Schmook's 89 Mustang GT. Hans is from Starkville, Mississippi, and gets a red light. This time, Mike Mitchell's 91 Stang takes on Red Armstrong's 87 Buick Regal T-Type. Both get good reaction times, but it looks like the Turbo V6 is going to beat Ford V8. It does. First up in EFI Modified is Brian Haas with his 530 horse 87 Grand National versus Craig Highlander's 89 Mustang. Craig gets a better reaction time, but turbos are hard to beat. Brian goes through the traps first. Saturday's EFI M8 class winner Gary Youngblood is back in his 89 Stang to face Travis Beckendorf's 86 Grand National. Good reaction times, but it looks like Travis is going to win. 
And he does by half a second. A pair of Buicks next, both Illinois cars, Tom Lorick's Grand National being up against Greg Whiteside's blue Regal T-Type. Tom gets a whole shot on Greg and stays ahead all the way down the track. In a buy run is our only four-cylinder entry in Modified, Mike Abbey's 86 Ford SVO Mustang. He launches with near-perfect reaction time. Going flat out with turbocharged 140 power, Mike gets a 12.86 at 104.32 miles per hour. Not bad for a four-cylinder. Here's the hottest of the new generation cars. Of the first round we caught this race between Peter Mazinski's blue Mustang and Ken McFarling's black and gray Stang. Ken laid down a near perfect reaction time, but Peter's 580 horsepower pony car ate up the track. Before we go to round two of the eliminations, let's check back with the hot rod cars to see how they're faring in time trials. As the competition for the fastest streetcar in America heats up, some of these high horsepower rockets are showing their fatigue. Amazingly, through some luck and the grace of good sportsmanship, it looks like many of these cars will be coming back for the Eliminator later on. Good luck, guys. For round two of Pure Stock, the Cobra Jet power of Steve Vanderwall's 68 and a half Mustang faces off with Barberton, Ohio native Ted Robb's 61 Ventura. Steve beats Ted out of the hole as the bigger motor takes hold. It's pretty close, but in the end, the Ventura can't catch him. F Pure Stock record holder Doris Anderson is up against the 455 Fury of Mark Norris's 1973 Firebird. The Firebird gets a big hole shot on the 340 Demon and outpaces Doris all the way down the track. Next up is the little five-speed Turbo Spirit RT of Joe Reese, one of the better examples of today's trendy sports sedan versus the old-fashioned big block of Chris Connolly's GSX. And it looks like age wins out this time. Here we have two show-worthy cars which are all race. In fact, Gary Lunt's Olds 442 won E Pure Stock yesterday, while Don Cassie's 63 Sport Fury won A Pure Stock. Both get excellent reaction times. The Max Wedge 426 looks like it's pulling away a bit. It is for the win. Pontiac Power on the line, GTO versus GTA. Victor Lee in the new car, Bob Looney in the old. Bob really jumps the gun with a .275 red light reaction time, giving the win to Victor Lee. Next is a buy run by H. Pure Stock winner Rod Helsel in his 340 Dart. He takes it fairly easy, going 14.90 at 94.80 miles per hour. Okay, we've got former Super Stock racer Barry Poole up against Kent Springer in his small block 79 AMC Spirit. An easy win for Poole's Cobra Jet Mustang as Kent red lights. A couple of big block Chevys approach the line next. Ken Keisling's four-speed 427 Nova versus Derek Smith's automatic 454 Vet. Ken is a native of Dumas, Texas and gets good reaction time against the Vet, but it looks like Derek is pulling away. Next up is Mike Semchi's 67 GTO and Dennis Miles' 84 Capri. It's four-speed versus five-speed. Young Dennis is a local racer from South Haven, Mississippi, and returns this round because his last opponent was disqualified. However, it looks like the GTO is going to take this one home. One of the past contenders for Clash of the Cubes, Danny Kellum's 427 Camaro, is alongside first place show winner Galen Rogers in his classy looking Buick GS. Danny's better reaction time launches him first, and he stays ahead. 
two Camaros up next. Ed Bendel's 467 cubic inch 67 against Dave Henniger's 391 71Z28. Confused? Doesn't matter, cause Dave red lights. One of the fastest AMXs around, TD Holland's 39068 is facing Kirk Manuel's lethal 440 Challenger. A longtime bracket and NMCA racer, TD nails the tree with his usual precision, but Kurt's cubes charge from the rear and overtake him. The big 72 Buick GS from Collinsville, Illinois is being driven by Tim Hefner, while this is Richard Lowry's last year's world champion. 462 versus 461 cubes respectfully. Good reaction times on both, but the Chevelle breaks the beams first. The 87 Regal T-Type driven by Red Armstrong is actually wife Jane's car, who won her show class this weekend. Richard Susky's 85 Vet also won the EFI stock appearing 8-cylinder race class yesterday. Both are solid 12-second cars, however Red is just two-tenths faster. Four versus eight here. Mike Abbey's turbo SVO Mustang is across from Travis Beckendorf's 86 Grand National. Mike gets a big hole shot on Travis, but Travis catches him near half track and passes him. Two 87 Grand Nationals on the line. Tom Lorex is rated at 655 cubic inches. Brian Haas at 530. Problem is, which one's which? Actually, Tom's in the near lane, and look at him take off. A sure win here. Richard Susky returns, this time with a 88 small block Monte Carlo. He's up against tweaked Lawrence Connolly's super six-cylinder Regal, bored out to 274 cubes. Richard gets the jump at the line, but Tweak runs with him, past him, and wins. Back to eliminator action as Canadian Steve Vanderwall pulls up to the line against Texan Mark Norris. Steve in the rare 428 Cobra Jet Mustang Coupe, Mark in the 455 Firebird. Both are pretty evenly matched D-class cars. Mark gets Steve out of the hole, but the Stang keeps up easily. Can he hold the Firebird at bay? Looks like he does. Next up are two Texans, both with 1970 muscle cars. Rod Heltzel, H-class winner, in his 340 Dart, and Chris Connolly in his 455 GSX. Both get some great reaction times. Rod's primarily a Ford man, but he's done some wonder with the small block Mopar. He's also built up Doris Anderson's Demon. But it looks like the Buick Big Block got him this time. Memphis native Don Cassi brings up his 63 Sport Fury. In the other lane is Victor Lee of Fayetteville, Arkansas, driving a 350 87 GTA. The GTA model was the fully loaded Trans Am back in 87, so it's a pretty hefty machine. Don dominates early on and carries the race. In a virtual repeat of their Clash of the Cubes race, Derek Smith and Barry Poole again face each other. Derek has recently changed the Vets' original 427 for a 454, while Barry switched the Stang's 428CJ for a 427 side oiler. Deja vu, another red light for Derek, and again he stays in it till the end. Next up, another heavy hitter in the form of Danny Kellum's 427 Camaro is facing Don Lemoyne's 68 390 AMX. Both are B-class cars due to the fact that the AMX is so much lighter than the Camaro. However, there's no replacing cubes for power, and Danny overcomes the whole shot to win. A longtime member of the NMCA, Mike Semchi stages his 67 GTO for a bye run. Michael's a native of Newton Falls, Ohio, and has been racing the same car for four years now, and it's still going strong. He cruises through the lights, going 13.86 at 111 miles per hour. Brian Hampton of Huntington, Tennessee, another of the several racers here today from this small town, is driving the 71 Nova small block. He's facing Kirk Manuel of Fort Worth, Texas in his 440-powered Dodge Challenger. Great reaction time from the Nova, but the Dodge eats up the asphalt between them and pulls ahead. Big block Chevys are paired off here as Dick Lowry's 461 Chevelle faces Ed Bendel's 467 Camaro. 
collective horsepower here is anybody's guess. With more cubes and less weight, Ed's the winner on paper, but it looks like Lowry's pulling ahead. And he wins with a solid 10 second run. Looks like a real showdown between Lowry and Kirk Manuel. As we start to wind things up for the final round, pure stock competitors Chris Connolly in the GSX and Don Cassie in the 63 Plymouth Sport Fury are now facing off. Chris is from Humble, Texas and is the EFI super modified racer, Lawrence Connolly's son. Both cars look good off the line, but it looks like the Sport Fury is pulling ahead. A bye run for Steve Vanderwall, he doesn't hold anything back. An excellent run at 12.95. Top stock returns to the line this time with Mike Semchi's 467 GTO up against Danny Kellum's 427 Camaro. Offhand it looks like Danny's got the advantage in weight and cubes, but Mike's four speed shifting endeavors to make it a race. And he holds it to a finish a few tenths behind Danny. Barry Poole up for the bye run. One of the former border bandits from back in the 60s, Barry's come out of retirement to campaign Mustangs again, and he's been quite successful. He eases out of the hole and shuts down early to save his motor for more racing. Here it is, the final round of eliminations to determine who's the best. Here it is, the final round of eliminations to determine who's the best. Remember that points earned here will heavily contribute to world championship totals. First up in pure stock is Don Cassi in the 426 Max Wedge Sport Fury versus Steve Vanderwall in the 428 Cobra Jet Mustang. Battle of the Engine nicknames. Whoa, Steve red lights automatically giving the win to Don. However, Steve is still in contention for the Pure Stock World Championship now being tied in points with Rod Heltzel. A sudden death runoff will determine the winner for this. An absolutely classic Ford versus Chevy confrontation. Both pony cars, both 427 powered. Barry Poole in the Stang, Danny Kellums in the Camaro. Ouch! Both cars red light, but the computer gives the win to the Ford since Danny jumped the gun one one thousandth of a second faster. Barry gets out of it a little early since he's got the top stock world championship practically in the trunk. But man, what a race this could have been. In another highly anticipated faceoff, Dick Lowry's 461 Chevelle SS is pitted against Kirk Manuel's 440 Challenger. Both are solid 10-second racers and both get excellent launches. But it looks like Kirk is broken right off the line. I guess we'll have to wait till next year to find out who's really the fastest. Without any solid competition, Dick Lowry becomes the world champ for the second year in a row. Ever since Pat Kelly beat him in Maple Grove, Red Armstrong's been looking for a rematch. Pat's driving the Grand National, Red his wife's Grey Regal T-Type. Pat nails an absolutely perfect reaction time of .500, but Red's not far behind. It's a close race, but it looks like Red's pulling ahead a little. Can Red hold it? He does, 12.06 to 12.18. However, with the lion's share of points, Pat Kelly is crowned the EFI stock appearing world champ. Two Grand Nationals up next. Tom Lorick's 87 in the far lane, Travis Beckendorf's 86 in the near lane. Boost has really been cranked up on these cars, with Travis rating his V6 at 450 incredible horses. Tom's at 650. Both get excellent launches, but it looks like Tom's backing off. Something must be wrong because this Elmhurst, Illinois native normally runs low tens. Travis easily takes the eliminator. Neither gets the world champ title, though as Mike Abbey earlier set both ends of his record and won his class, giving him the most points. Lawrence Connolly of Connolly's Performance Plus has been a tough contender to beat in this series, already having a lock in the EFI Super Modified World Championship. 
back in Houston, his tweak broke into the nines for the first time and has been a hard act to follow up ever since. Up to make a try is Peter Mazinski Jr. of Tuckerton, New Jersey in a 580 horsepower Mustang LX. He red lights, however, and hands the win to Lawrence, who still goes ahead and makes a full run. He finishes with 9.91, the fastest car in the Muscle Challenge eliminations. First of our exhibition classes, the Nostalgia Superstockers have proved to be a tremendous treat to the crowds who get to relive this exciting chapter in muscle car history. These excellent examples are on the cutting edge of a new trend to restore and even race these rare full-bodied monsters. First up we've got the replica of the old Superstocker racer Akron Arlen Vanke's Brownie, a 1963 426 Max Wedge Plymouth sedan driven by Paul Suloff versus Burbank, Illinois native Frank Zuled's 65 Dodge 330 with 462 cubes of raw Chrysler power. And Frank gets a red light right off the bat. Paul's not easing up any as he takes the Max Wedge home for a run of 10.70 at 127 miles per hour. Here we have a unique situation. We started off with an odd number of cars, so one of them was assigned a buy run. However, one of the other contenders can't make it to staging, so to be fair, we're doing a double buy run and not an actual race. In the 63 Chevy Impala with classic 409 power is Don Schaefer, yesterday's number one qualifier with an ET of 10.79. In the 62 Bel Air, also with a 409, is Russ Campbell. Good reaction times from both. Don gets a 10.94, Russ an 11.29, and both return for round two. Donnie, Mr. Nickname Chapman, is up next in his Max Wedge powered 62 Dodge Dart. He's up against David Johnson of Berwyn, Illinois, in a 432 powered 63 Pontiac Tempest. Donnie was second in qualifying and has so many nicknames we can't keep up with him. Off the line, Donnie gets a big hole shot and he stays ahead of the Tempest all the way to the end. Next up we have the 459 board out cubes of Joe Zajac's 63 Pontiac Catalina against Gordon Marks who brought his 64 409 Biscayne all the way from Tampa, Florida. Possibly one of the longest trips to this event. Gordon gets an excellent reaction time but it looks like the Catalina is charging past him. He does... Sorry Gordon. Another Chevy versus Pines, this time with Dave Campbell's 63 409 Bel Air going to the line against Bill Banks' little 64 GTO. It looks to be a pretty close race. At the end, Dave Campbell pulls ahead a little to take the win. The first Ford into the fray comes to the line, a 63 and a half 427 Galaxy owned by Herb Reeves of Marietta, Georgia. He's facing Eric Johnson of Creed, Illinois in the no-sponsored 62 Catalina with a 421 engine board out to 432. They launch, and Eric assumes an early lead for the win. Another Ford up next, this time a 427-powered 66 Fairlane owned by Paul Adams of Barbersville. You may recall that Paul also has a 70 Torino in competition. He's facing the 64 Philip Belvedere of Danny Bird with 434 cubes of Chrysler Motor. Once off the line, Danny takes the lead and holds off the Fairlane to finish at 10.89, effectively shutting down the Ford effort. Danny Bird returns for round two to pull up alongside Dodd Schaefer's 1963 Impala. Danny hails from Sykeston, Missouri, while Don's from Lexington, Missouri. Good reaction times from both cars, pacing each other all the way down the track. Danny's Belvedere gets just enough of an edge to win by one-tenth of a second. Next up is Brownie, the 63 Max Wedge Plymouth owned and built by Bob Kyles and Paul Suloff and driven by Paul. And yes, their hometown is Akron, Ohio. They're up against the 62 Bel Air of Kearney, Missouri native Dave Campbell. Good reaction time for Dave but it looks like Paul's pulling ahead slightly. He wins with an ET of 11 seconds. Donnie Chapman up again with his white West Virginia wedge facing the no sponsor of Eric Johnson. 
This is actually a replica of the car Eric's brother raced back in the early 60s, back in the days when you didn't need big money to race. You just walked into a dealership and ordered the car. Wow, Donnie gets a near-perfect reaction time of .509, and he outpaces the poncho all the way down the track for a 10.88 ET. Pontiac and Chevy returned to the line to determine which of the General's cars was the better super stocker. Joe Zajac's 63 Catalina versus Russ Campbell's 62 Bel Air. Russ has Joe out of the hole, but the Pontiac comes back to take the win 11.15 to 11.50. Okay, we're down to four cars now, three Chryslers and one Pontiac. First up are a pair of Plymouths. Paul Suos, light brown, 63, versus Danny Bird, 64, Belvedere. Both are capable of mid 10 second quarter miles. Uh oh, Danny gets a red light, but he goes ahead and runs out the race with Paul all the way. Donnie Chapman's Dodge is up to bat next, facing Joe Zajac's 63 Catalina. You may be interested to know that Donnie is the father of young top stock racer Kevin Chapman. They're off, and we can't tell if either one's ahead. It's going to be close. It's real close, 11.01 at 121.65 miles per hour from Donnie to 11.08 at 121.27 miles per hour from Joe. Nitty gritty time, no more bench racing, this is the real thing. Paul Suloff, 63 Plymouth, faces down the grill work of Donnie Chapman's 62 Dodge Dart. Both are Chrysler products, both are max wedge power. At this point, the World Championship is already in the bag for Paul Suloff, with Eric Johnson getting beaten a few rounds back. But who has the fastest car here has yet to be determined. Both cars get good launches. They tangle most of the way down the track. But Paul starts to pull ahead and takes the win. Okay, this is it. The shootout to determine who has the 10 fastest streetcars in the whole country. We know you've been eagerly awaiting this moment, so we won't waste any more time with race rhetoric. To kick off the shootout, Rod Sabry approaches the line in his killer 57 vet. He's got a freshly installed 632 Garrett racing engine's rat motor, one of the few naturally aspirated cars participating this weekend. Rod pulls off an excellent run going 8.55 at 156 miles per hour. Next up is Steve Grebick of Redford, Michigan in the 92 Mustang sporting 900 nitrous induced horses of 342 cubic inch Ford small block. Next to him is Max Carter in the 66 Chevy 2, a 557 inch nitrous injected block with a power glide tranny. Massive red light from Steve makes the race for Max. A pair of Super Chevys next. Dave Lemon's 67 Chevy 2 blew its power glide yesterday, resulting in a swap time of only 50 minutes with the help of some of the other racers. Stan and Dallas Shaw own the gorgeous blown 57 Bel Air, a real showstopper as well as a race car. Both cars have over 750 horsepower. Dave gets the whole shot and easily outruns the Bel Air. Steve Johnson's 81 Trans Am comes to Memphis with the highest claimed horsepower of any of these cars. 1,400 incredible horses for his 615 cubic inch motor, while George Pointer's 61 Vet sports mechanical fuel injection atop a 460 cubic inch engine. Last week he blew his 540 and had to throw through his 700 horse boat motor, but he still pulls a 10.18 to Steve's winning 8.55 at 163 miles per hour. Mustang versus Camaro here. No horsepower ratings on either of these nitrous cars, but Greg Cicerni is driving wife Barb's 86 Street Stang with a 514 block. Dan Scott's 67 Camaro is a 540 with a Lenko. One of the three Camaros representing Cars Inc., Dan's car is all steel, weighing in at 3,400 pounds. However, he takes a lead at the lights, and it looks like he's going to hold it. 
Next up is a buy run for the lethal twin turbocharged 302 89 Mustang of Gene Deputy. He dozes through the lights but takes the car for a nine second ride. Two 67 Chevys approach the line next. The massive 4,000 pound Impala sports an 800 horse, 565 cubic inch engine driven by Randy Lambert, while the 570 750 horse Camaro built by Mike Mathios is owned by Mark Tate. The whole frame was practically designed around the 5 inch Flowmaster mufflers. The Camaro gets a perfect red light but he drives hard enough to get 8.93 at 155 miles per hour to Randy's winning 9.78. Another buy run, this time it's Ken Anderson with a 78 Chevy Malibu powered by a 1,000 horse, 598 cubic inch fat rat motor. Earlier, Ken had thoughtfully provided the parts for Dave Lemon's busted tranny. He makes an easy run of 12.02 seconds. Next up, Stacy Nowak of Decatur, Alabama stages his 77 477 Camaro. No horsepower rating stated, while Vito Paterno does the same in his beefy 505 powered 860 horse 69 Chevelle. Vito blew a head gasket during a qualifying round yesterday and he spent most of last night replacing it. Looks like the hard work paid off as Vito gets the win. In another impromptu buy run, Jim Huber brings up his 69 Chevelle. Picked by the Hot Rod editors as the most real streetcar, this Chevelle sports a modest, nitrous-fed, 406 cubic inch small block with 10 to 1 compression. No tubs and lugging around 3,600 pounds. It looks like he's coasting through this one. Breaking in the staging lanes is apparently causing the large number of buy runs. Next up is Billy Edwards of Campobello, South Carolina, nearing his chopped 66 Chevelle. Six inches of sheet metal were removed right down the center of this car. The motor is a blown 510, so far the only blower car to get into the eights. And Billy proves it by making another eight second pass. With Rick Dyer's Camaro dead in the staging lanes, Jeff Dean brings up his 421 small block 74 Nova. A real subtle piece, he eases through a run of 11.38 at 120 miles per hour. At the beginning of round two, Jeff Dean returns to face Miller's Maryland native, Rod Sabri. Jeff hails from Lancaster, Ohio. Rod gets an excellent light. Even though Jeff breaks into the nines, Rod pulls another eight second run. In one of those ironies of true sportsmanship, Ken Anderson is having to face the very man he helped out, Dave Lemon. Dave should receive a nod for getting the best performance out of the smallest tires, nine inches. But Ken's incredible 598 cubic inch nitrous Malibu grabs and outruns him down the track. A pair of small block Fords up next. The Texas Turbo Mustang of Gene Deputy versus Mike Moran's Boss 302 Pinto Station Wagon. Mike, who appropriately is out of Dearborn Heights, turned his nitrous-fed V8 into a V6 during qualifying yesterday, but not before turning in some 8.80s. Ouch, now he's blown something right off the line. Next up, a buy run for Max Carter and the Carter family's 66 Chevy 2. Max was having a lot of trouble yesterday, first by missing time trials while waiting for a tranny, then was all over the track due to cracked axle housings. So far, the impromptu welds have held, but Max isn't cutting them any slack as he makes a 9.22 run. Two Chevelles at the line now. Billy Edwards chops 66 against Jim Huber's Sweet 69. Jim's very streetable 406 broke a ring yesterday, so the St. Leon, Indiana native has been running with a handicap. Billy Edwards walks past him with 8.71 at 161 miles per hour. Vito Paterno of Struthers, Ohio in his 505 Chevelle faces off with Dan Scott, the sole survivor of Cars Inc. Camaro Racing Team. Teammates Rick Dyer and Jim Treppa are out with electrical and tranny problems, respectively. Dan scorches Vito's limping Chevelle with an 8.54 ET. Billy Edwards back again for a round three by run. He goes flat out for an 8.72 at 161 miles per hour.
It's Chevy versus Ford time again, as Rod Savory pulls his vet up to face Gene Deputy's 89 Mustang. It's humongous 632 against small block. Power glide versus automatic. All car versus twin turbo induction. Rod makes an excellent run, but something appears to be wrong with the Mustang. We've just learned that Ken Anderson's Malibu lost a cylinder last round, so he's going to have a tough time beating Steve Johnson's awesome Firebird. Moot point as he red lights. Steve Johnson's definitely up there as he runs an 8.56 ET. Here's Max Carter's Chevy 2 against Dan Scott's Camaro. Although these two faced each other in last year's Top Gun shootout, Dan supplied the torch that repaired Max's rear end. You know, a lot of these racers have been great about helping each other out. However, with Max so far being unable to get out of the mines, wait, this is going to be close. Amazing. Max Carter wins with the fastest ET yet posted, 8.44 at 158 miles per hour. Jeez. Round four and the field has been whittled down to just four cars. First pair up is Billy Edwards and Rod Sabre. Rod's vet nails an excellent reaction time, but Billy's hard charging Chevelle is keeping up. This is the closest race yet. Rod goes to the final round with an 8.62 to Billy's 8.69. The next pair is Max Carter and Steve Johnson. Based on Max's performance last round, this should be another close race. They purge the nitrous. Carter's Chevy 2 is out in front. Incredible. Max becomes the comeback king as he breaks his own record for the fastest ET of the event, 8.38 at 160 miles per hour. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for. The crowds in the stands are quiet in anticipation. Coming to the line are Max Carter of Louisville, Kentucky in his now recovered Chevy 2 and Rod Sabry in his recently rebuilt 632 Corvette. Both use power glide trannies. Other than that, it's pure cubes versus nitrous fed induction. Rod's got the advantage out of the hole, but it looks like, yes he does, Max Carter comes around to win 8.43 at 160 miles per hour to 8.74 at 150 miles per hour. Max Carter has the fastest streetcar in the land. Hot Rod Magazine selected the following cars based on the seven round two winners plus the three quickest round two losers. To quote Hot Rod, we selected the top 10 by eliminations instead of ET as a test of longevity. In other words, streetcars shouldn't break after one pass. So in reverse order, here are the 10 fastest streetcars for 1992 with the special jackets being awarded by Jeff Smith of Hot Rod Magazine. Jim Huber with his 69 Chevelle running at 10.14 at 136.46 miles per hour. Jeff Dean, 74 Nova, a 9.87 at 138.73 miles per hour. Dave Lemon, 67 Chevy 2, 9.31 seconds at 151.03 miles per hour. Gene Deputy's 89 Mustang, running 9.16 seconds at 152.54 miles per hour. Ken Anderson, 78 Malibu, 8.90 seconds at 152.85 miles per hour. Billy Edwards, 66 Chevelle, 8.56 seconds at 162.63 miles per hour. Steve Johnson's 81 Trans Am, 8.52 at 163.22 miles per hour. Rod Sabry's 57 Corvette, 8.52 at 155.97 miles per hour. Dan Scott's 67 Camaro, 8.49 seconds at 160.59 miles per hour. And Max Carter's 66 Chevy 2, 8.38 at 160.85 miles per hour. I started out thinking Flow Master and Compute Car and TCI. We had a transmission problem. They fixed our converter for us and transmission Friday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. 
uh, like thank Danny Scott the most. Our rear end was busted last night, and he came over here and fixed our rear end, welded it up. Then we had to race him. Well, actually, he left on me, and I think I pulled out ahead of him, and about mid-track, he pulled back up along beside of me, and then right at the lights, it went ahead and drove away from me a little bit, but it was, it was definitely a close one. <laughs> What do you think about awesome. Oh, Dad's real happy, real happy for Jimmy. I'd also like to thank him. He's the mechanic and crew chief and the tune-up man of the whole operation. Without him, it wouldn't have been running 834 and all them kind of times, and every time we broke something, we'd have probably been out. He kept us fixed and running good. We want to thank you for joining us in this nostalgic and exciting event. This video only scratches the surface of what went on the weekend of the 1992 World Finals. We only wish we could have a couple of more hours to show you the Midway, Model Car Contest, Bracket Race, and Exhibition Cars, as well as more of the Car Cruise and Car Show. Our hope is that all of you will someday get to join in on the fun and help preserve our proud performance heritage for future generations.